Greetings and salutations to you, people of the interwebs, and welcome to this week's edition of Transformer of the Week, where I'm going to be looking at this guy. This is Fans Projects Pinchar. Pinchar, they finally released it. We didn't think this guy would ever make it, but he has. So back in the great third-party Dinobot War of 2014, I sided with Fans Project and the Lost Exo Realm. My first ever full transforming third-party figure was Columpio, their take on Sludge. And so a mere three and a half years or whatever it is later, they finally finished the set. <laughs> Whereas other ones have um, finished a long time ago. Even Hasbro have finally released the set of Dinobots and almost completed theirs before Fans Project. But they snuck in just before the second wave of the Hasbro Dinobots. Snuck him out and here he is. It's a great sense of relief, great feeling of completion having this guy. And he's a cool little, I say little, Voyager, plus sized Voyager, Chug stylized Dinobot. And that's, that's why I went with Fans Project above all others, because they were doing something a little bit more different. There was lots of them that were doing different by making them combiners. It seemed obvious, but Fans Project, just, Fans Project just seemed to have a little different bit of style about them. And they had these add-on weapon guys that we'll get into later. So here he is. And, oh, I love just the various different bits. You know, some more silvery bit and the grey. Some nice reds and blues throughout. Then different golds. You know, you've got your matte gold and you've got your more chromy gold on the uh, the sun catches, the spines, the plates, whatever you want to call them. So, all in all, you've got an underside as well. He's just a snarl, isn't he? He's a stegosaurus. Mighty fine Stegosaurus. So, his head can kind of go down, can kind of look up, and you can open that mouth up quite wide, and he's got some very sharp teeth. There's not really anywhere that these legs kind of, there's not really a pegging on point, they just kind of just stop here. But they don't really peg in. And you can move them on a ratchet. It's very nice sounding. And you can move them there. There's no like swivel or anything like that. That's on both sides. Got a bit of clear plastic in the eyes that, you know, light pipes straight through. But there's no block there. So it doesn't really catch anything unless you're holding it, you know, directly in front of the light. Back legs, proper, some serious proper ratchets there. Nice kick out there if he wants to piss against the tree. You can move it into a really wide stance should you want. Um, there is a swivel there, a movement and a bend at the toe. So you know these are quite articulated. Uh, no prizes for what they become in robot mode. And the tail it's just got a little waggle on his fracker. Some very nice sharp points there. So not the most articulated of beasts, but competently done. I really like the, the colour breakup, and it looks like a Dinobot. <laughs> but it's still, you know, it's its own... <clears throat> it's not too slavish. To the G, you know, the colours are in the right place, but the sculpting and work and stuff like that is it, it's his own thing. So he does come with this guy. This is called 
Um, guy, man, thing. We're going to call him Shiv. Snarl and Shiv. That makes more sense. So he's, he's the battle master that they all come with. And he's a very cool little legend size robot man. Um, got some nice articulation. Now it shows, and like how he's got these bits coming off his arms there, so it's almost like a mirror of, you know, Snarl's separated tail in his robot mode. Um, got a slight swivel at the head, um, ball joints at the elbows, as well as these two ball joints. And there was a swivel joint and a ball joint here, and ball joints at the thigh. Ball joints at the knee. These look at these serious clown shoes there that can kind of do that. He does come with his own accessories, so he comes with the shield. You can peg in on there, and his own shiv or a sword that can also peg in to his arm. So that kind of makes him. Really quite cool and dynamic with his, yeah, sword and shield. I quite like. I like that. He's very much fun. I think he's probably one of the most fun of the guys that they come with. He doesn't really have any word readily that he kind of rides on it. He can just, you know, stand up on the. Should he so wish? So that also comes with. The clear red sword and the big cannon that you can mount on his back legs if you want to weaponize your Stegosaurus. But being a transformer, he does transform, so we'll get into that. And unlike some of the other fans project guy, this guy transforms exactly pretty much how you want him to. Probably the most difficult bit here, or the most unsafe bits, kind of, is just separating this tail here, because it just feels like you want to, I've separated the halves there, but you want to separate that like so, but there's like so much stuff that you don't want to grab hold of, like these platelets. So we've separated that, we've separated that from there, from the waist as well, you want to Kind of pull that up until you hear it click. That's that sorted. Pull that bit back, like so. Move, swing these plates here. Do you hear a click? So your shoulder plates swing. Oh, until you, they click into place. Can I get your finger back in here? Flip up the head. Let's do that for now. We'll get onto these legs. So, again, separate these out. You want to then separate the legs there. Bring that up to there. And move this black bit up there. Swing his foot round this bit of here on his knee, like so. Get under there, pull out that toe, pick that leg, pick that head half into there, and do it all over again. So, move that black bit, release that toe, swing in the foot, move the black bit right round, move the head to the side, peg it in. Get into the knee, move it up, and then 
move all that there. And that's his lower half, don't we? So we'll move these to the side here. Swing those round. Open these up. <laughs> oh, pull out the fists. I've never seen that kind of thing in a third party figure before. Put that out. Reave out the fists. Put that bit back. Now then, get in here. Separate these two tail halves. See? Like so. Now, there's a groove there, so this kind of comes back here to there. Like so, and then these move back. Oh. Like that, and that is Snarl in his robot mode. Oh, he's a bit of a he's a bit of an odd one. He is a bit of an odd one, but. I like it. There's something about his proportions. There's the, the big legs. Oh, this chest, these arms. Oh, yeah. So you can have this this way if you want, or that way. It kind of looks better all the way like so, in my mind. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's my fans' project, Dinobots, complete. Now, I'd say he just feels like it's very square, very much angles. And I'm not sure what this crotch business is all about. <laughs> but, yeah, he feels a lot more angular than some of the others. The others seem to have had a lot more curves and rounded kind of bits especially like in the fire areas and stuff like that that this guy is more yeah jagged i don't know if that makes him not match up with the others but he's still very uniform with them at the same time and i know a lot of people have had stuff to say about this hood section and they don't like it and there is a, a modification that if you cut a bit off there you can get that so it folds down further but that's not the design intent is it the, the, the intent of the design is for it to be up here and there's something about it and there's something about all the angles and the sharp teeth in stegosaurus mode that makes this guy feel very almost g2 like it's very kind of like also if like if current optimus prime artist um k zama got to design the dinos it feels like something they do having these bit more extreme kind of proportions and, and, and accentuating things like the uh, dinosaur spines in robot mode making him protrude protrude and not just be tucked away because you know dino dinobots have always made significant character out of the kibble so having this extra bit there to me doesn't ruin the figure but there again i came into fans project in the great third party dinobot war because I wanted something different. I wanted him to take strange design choices rather than just doing a standard group of Dinobots. And I admire that. And I do like this. Anyway. 
rant over. Let's just um, go with that. So these have exactly the same kind of motion as the uh, back half of the back legs of the dinosaur did. With an added wrist swivel with um, mitten articulation on the hand. He's got a bit of a ab movement there. And he's got a lovely waist swivel. For me, in terms of leg ratchets, he's got the one that make you know can do the most. I don't need to stand in an A stance kind of his ratchet points do a right a proper you know standing attention thing and you know they're not the, the there's plenty of clicks there to give you a lot of different movements. There's not like a it's not like a very you know drastic gradient between the, the flip you know the clicks of the ratchet that is a really good range on it so he's got a good up and down as well he's got a thigh swivel he's got that nice deep knee there now he's does have a tilt there if you if you move that out of the way his tilt is to the extreme and also can bend like that but that armature just feels quite frail <laughs> so it's nice to just have that sturdy in there and not really go for two extreme poses with those feet you know you can move these down if you want you can move this the what's the point let's stick to the design intent on that And he can hold his weapons. So he's got this big old gun. Yeah, taking the snarl gun and taking it to the extreme. Quite like that. And he's down about sword. So yeah, it looks really good. When this guy is not terribly photogenic, you know. And the first release photographs of him did seem like they'd probably got someone over from Hasbro to uh, take photographs of it because you know it just didn't look good at all you know, it's a typical kind of people when you're getting people to take pictures of your prop you know your, your, your um, products make sure you get someone who's actually good at taking photos sometimes they just look like you know weird dumpy things and it's like no this guy is made he looks better and better the more you know dynamic you start putting his poses in because he's not that photogenic, but he feels a lot better in hand. But as soon as he gets starts rocking more um, dynamic poses, the better he looks. That's just uh, he's not someone just to get stand straight on your shelf. You need to have a bit of space to pose him, or just better still to have him in hand and play around. So this guy becomes his weapon. So remove that. And remove that. Get this head here. Stick out this abdominal piece. Make sure his head's straight. That goes into there, like so. Let's move that down for a second. Right, we want to, which way do we want to put these? Right, I think we want to get these kind of like so, and coming together like that, which then will bring this click into place there then want to get these legs bring in the toes bring in the toes like that abdominal piece back there click those bits into place and now we just have to get his bits his shield pegs in there 
and his blade. Pegs in like so. That gives him big blade weapon. Got a peg there, a peg there for holding. So yeah, so we can get snarl, and we can give him this. Fortunately, I've found well, it's holding it all right at the moment. But quite, sometimes, if you get into more, you know, try and hold it straight like that. Those uh, mushroom pegs on his wrist are not gonna hold that. He'll hold it up high like that, but yeah, in some poses, he won't be able to hold it. It's full length because it is a big, ridiculous thing. Um, it could be a bit more of a spaceship than a sword. That I do quite like to move these bits out as well because you know you can have them pegged in. That gives it more of a guard kind of look to it. But he does have that was it. some of these peg holes tighter than others, so you can, should you wish, give it a side mounted as well. And that is Fans Project Snarl. Like I said, you know, the Lost Exo Realm Dinobots were my first entry into the third party Transformers scene. So completing the team lineup is, is brilliant. I just... To be honest with you, if this came out with a Scorn, a Bazooka, a Killer Punch, I'd still be up for that as well. But finishing these off is just being great. And they'll always be a special part of my collection. I know that in some ways he feels a little bit outdated and he does feel like, you know, because he's part of the same team, the team that started, they started three and a half years ago, he still feels like a three and a half year old third party Transformer, whereas they've come a long way since then. And he could have just come out, you know, a couple of months after the others, really. I don't think, it doesn't feel like they've spent any extra time kind of, you know, putting bells and whistles on, but if they did make him with current standards of what third third party Transformers are knocking out, then he wouldn't fit in with them at all with the rest of the figures. And it's just a shame that they've the release schedule that they've done has <laughs> just been crazy. You know, the first couple of month, you know, couple of months, couple of months, couple of months, and then oh ages and oh ages and then um where's the company gone? All right, now, now we'll get him out. So, yeah, it's just been a wild ride, really. Didn't even think they'd ever actually get it done. But they have done. And he's competent and he's strong. Would I recommend him? If you have the others, you kind of have to buy him. If you don't have the others, it might be a bit odd starting with this guy. Even though he's great. And he does have stuff going on of his own merit. But I couldn't just say, oh, yeah, just pick him up. He's very much a part of the team. All for one and one for all and all that, yeah? Anyway, I've enjoyed him and I'm glad to have finished my fans' project Dinobots. So, Avi Bisto Yeti, thanks for joining me. Another Transformer of the Week. Join me next time. There'll be more Transformers. There'll be more weeks. I am feeling a bit tired. It's been a long day. But, as always... And a big thank you to everyone who's been giving out shout outs and everything and trying to get this uh, 1,000 subscribers for some of us, you know, us smaller YouTube channels. I mean, I know people like Transformers of Beer and The Graham, the Collect 75 have, have been giving out various shout outs to channels. If I had better editing technology, I'd throw some names across the screen at you. I don't. Maybe check in my comments below and you know 
the people who are commenting, the people who are contributing, the people who are a part of this society, this um, community. They're the guys who need your support. So check out a few of the names who are chatting below and maybe give them a subscription, yeah? Until then, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. And because you deserve it, let's bump, shall we? Bisto! Fisto!